What's up guys, Vital Syntax here, and this is going to be my review for the single player campaign for Crisis 3. Now I'm not doing this near the release date, it's been a couple days, almost a week, since the release of Crisis 3, so I'm going to make this video as quick as possible because there's already a lot of reviews out there, and I just kind of want to get my opinion out there uh, in a short video. So I finished the campaign uh, about two days ago, and I was kind of un underwhelmed with the length of it. It took me about seven hours to complete. I've heard anywhere from six to eight hours is kind of the uh, the length that people are beating it in. Kind of depends on which difficulty you play at. I played at the normal difficulty, um, and I would actually recommend playing at the normal difficulty. If you play on the higher difficulties, you have to use a lot more stealth, a lot more of the bow and arrow. You don't really get to experience the nano suit uh, of armor and just running around and having a lot of fun that you you know get to experience that in multiplayer but if you're playing on the harder difficulty in single player you kind of have to take the stealth role most of the scenarios that you get into as far as the uh, the characters and the development of the story it was a bit better than i think crisis 2 where i felt like i didn't really know what was going on i didn't really care what was going on where there was some slight character development and some slightly emotional cutscenes from Crisis 3 that we didn't see in Crisis 2 and we didn't really see in Crisis 1 either. Uh, so that was a nice addition and I think they did a really good job with the facial animations uh, and the graphics as a whole, but especially the facial animations and some of the cutscenes that really kind of portrayed uh, the character's emotions. Now with Crisis 2, the previous Crisis game, the game was very linear. You kind of had a set path that you had to follow, you know, take a left here, take a right here. Uh, it was in, you know, downtown uh, uh, New York, and with Crisis 1, the very first you know crisis in the series, it was an open world. You had basically an objective that you had to get to, and you could take any direction, any path that would lead you to that area. And that's my preferred, I think, uh, style of game. I like the open world games a little bit more than the linear games where you kind of uh, have these set cutscenes that are triggered by you walking in this area. Um, and Crisis 3, I think, is a mix of the of the two, which is a, at least better than Crisis 2. So you still have a limited range of exploration. You know, the game's not completely open world. There's a lot of cutscenes. There's a lot of walls and boundaries to the map. Um, but the areas that you get to play in are a lot bigger than you had with Crisis 2. Um, you can kind of choose which path you take to get to the objective. Um, you know, it's still linear gameplay but it's a very wide linear gameplay uh, there's a lot of verticality in some of the maps there's uh, you can go you know explore around in some of the different areas and there's some hidden areas that have uh, enemies and weapons and things that you can pick up um, but at least it's better than crisis 2 I would have wished that they gone back they had gone back to the original crisis uh, and given us more of an open world experience that uh, I think everybody else really enjoyed a lot more so throughout the single player you get to unlock nano suit modules by finding these uh, little boxes around the map and when I played through I only found about I don't know six or seven of them and it seemed like you'd have to play through the game a couple times to unlock all of the nano suit, nano suit modules and I didn't really get to try them out either because uh, I was only able to unlock you know, four or five um, because some of them take two unlocks, some of them take three unlocks and there's a lot of nano suit modules I didn't get to mess around with so that was kind of unfortunate I would have wished they uh, kind of gave you those a little more sporadically and you had I guess a, a, a bigger selection um, as you're playing through the game to switch out for different nano suit modules. Now there is some vehicle gameplay in Crisis 3. There's a couple scenes where you get to drive a dune buggy. There's a couple scenes where you're in a helicopter or you get to drive a tank. And there's also one scene where you're in this uh, Ceph like gunship type of thing. Um, and it looks like you're going to get to drive it, and it looks like you're going to get to fly it, and then it just basically puts you on rails and has you be the gunner while Psycho drives you around. And that was kind of unfortunate, especially because they kind of made they kind of built it up like I was going to be able to drive the ship around, and I was really looking forward to that. But uh, no, there is no drivable uh, air vehicles. There is kind of a on rails shooting mechanic, which isn't bad, but I would have preferred to actually have control of the flight um, of the vehicle. Now obviously the graphics of any Crisis game is absolutely amazing and Crisis 3 is no different. It's the best looking game on any system as of right now and it destroys my my computer which was recently upgraded to use a, a GTX 680 and on the highest settings I'm getting like anywhere from 30 to 40 uh, frames per second and that's really impressive of, of just how powerful this game engine is and how powerful this game is. and everything from the facial animations to the textures to the weapon animations to the lighting the particle effects it's all just top-notch and that's something that you know everybody kind of expects but it kind of blows you away every time that you actually get your hands on it and get to play it yourself 
Now, there are some really cool moments throughout the campaign, especially some of the boss fights that you get into um, that uh, I really, really enjoyed. I remember playing Crisis 1, and there was uh, these, these scenes where you got to fight these huge aliens, and I really enjoyed that. And there's some of those returning type of boss fights uh, with Crisis 3, and that's definitely a welcome addition uh, to the campaign. They were a little bit easy to, 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 to defeat. Um, there didn't, you know, it wasn't a lot of strategy. It was just kind of shoot at them and they die. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was still really cool to see something like that. Now, I want to talk about the ending of the game a bit uh, without giving away any spoilers, just in case there's somebody watching that hasn't played it or and, and plans on playing it. But I think I was a little bit underwhelmed with the ending. It was kind of your generic cliche, uh, save the world type of ending. And the very ending like the the, the very last cutscene of the game was out of place it felt weird uh not only was it like how is, how does that work but also it, it, the cgi or the the way they rendered it looked like the graphics looked different which is kind of weird so yeah the, the ending was kind of weird is all i can say it was kind of cliche at the same time now if you look online at something like ign or GameSpot or even metacritic and look at the reviews for this game. Most people are giving it anywhere between uh, a 70 and an 85, with the average, I think, is somewhere between 79 and 82, depending on which platform you're looking at. And I think that's a fairly good uh, rating um, for the uh, the single-player campaign. I'd probably give the single-player somewhere between a 75 and an 80 um, out of 100. But I think the multiplayer is really where this game is strong. And in my multiplayer review, which I'll put a link in the description if you guys haven't seen that, uh, I think this game really leaps ahead of some of the other first person shooters out there um, and makes this title a much stronger purchase than if it was just a single player experience. But yeah, overall, the, uh, the game maybe isn't worth buying just for the single player, but uh, the multiplayer is freaking awesome. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to give me a like or a favorite. Remember to subscribe for more Crisis 3 content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.